Hello and welcome to my presentation on 21st Century Learning for the 21st Century Learning Capstone Project for Ashland University. This is just kind of the highlights from my 20 page paper. Um, I decided to cover everything was going to take more than 10 to 15 minutes and would be an awfully lengthy prezi so I cut a few things. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing that I talked about are the learner characteristics. I believe that the fundamental philosophies, feelings, and motivations of the 21st century learner is no different than the 20th century learner. Students are and have continually been motivated by positive reinforcement and praise. The 20th century learner wanted to learn and learn in a fun, interesting way. The problem was that the 20th century learning style was an industrial one. Students were placed in rows of desks. Instruction was teacher-centered. The students were expected to obediently receive instruction. The 21st century shift is a child-centered and focused on what the student wants and needs to succeed. Now this is a picture that I found of a friend and his son on Facebook the other day. It spoke to me about the current 21st century learner, the digital native. The thir 15 month old son is holding an iPhone while playing on the iPad with his dad. This is the face of children today. The 21st century learner lives and thrives on technology. In this case, one technology device was not enough. He needed two. The work of Prensky in the article Digital Native states that students are learning in different ways today than students in the past. He states that students are born immersed in technology that produces changes in their neurobiology that makes them different. They crave new ways of learning with small attention spans. I believe that this is to be true, but as a digital immigrant, I know that I often crave teaching styles that were more project-based and provided instant access. Here we're going to talk about the Partnership for the 21st Century Skills Organization, P21. It states that the four main skills to teach a 21st century learner are critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. At times, teachers can find themselves falling back into the teaching style of the 20th century. And this uh, website is here to help us not fall back. I know with me, with only 25 minutes a week for art, for each student, an art room can be set in a way that restricts group work and at time restricts collaboration. Students that work quietly often get the work completed at a faster pace. This theory does not allow students the ability to communicate and suggest creative alternatives to the projects. Research shows that allowing students to work collaboratively and talk with each other enhances learning. The 21st century learner wants to work with their peers. Reflection and critical thinking enables students to learn from their experiences. Therefore, time must be built into the classroom instruction for both processes to occur. And next. The work of Blooms and his taxonomy of educational objectives back in 1956 has shown that students need more than simple reading from a textbook. The revised revision of the taxonomy created in 2000 has given new life to this pedagogy. Based on the use and examination of the revised taxonomy, teachers can decide where and how to improve planning of curriculum and the delivery of instruction. The cognitive process dimension, use of remember, understand, apply, analyze, and evaluate by creating gives the 21st century learner the teaching style that they crave. Now we're going to move on to the 21st century skills in art education. As an art teacher, I found I feel that I'm teaching in a 21st century style and environment within my classroom. My curriculum encompasses creativity, project-based learning, and technology. According to the research report by the President's Committee on the Arts and Humanities entitled Reinvesting in Arts Education, experiences in the arts are valuable on their own but they also enliven theory learning of other subjects, making them indispensable for a complete education in the 21st century. Crayola, seen here, has used this report to create the Champion Creatively, Creatively <laughs> Alive Children Project. This project provides lesson plans and resources that is rich in the 21st century pedagogy. 
This program, found at this website, is creating a big push towards the four C's, back in that P21 project, that help engage students with creativity, collaboration, communication, and critical thinking skills. As an art teacher, I feel lucky that my curriculum is based entirely around project-based learning. Studies comparing learning outcomes for students taught via project-based learning versus traditional instruction show that when implemented well, project-based learning increases long-term retention of content, helps students perform as well as or better than traditional learners in high-stake tests, improves problem-solving and collaboration skills, and improves students' attitudes towards learning. Effective visual arts lessons and curriculum must be created using instructional design principles for 21st century learning skills. Uh, and seen here are e-portfolios that can be used, such as artsonia.com for student evaluation and allow students to evaluate themselves and each other. The one thing that needs to be addressed in school districts regarding 21st century skills is to increase the quantity of professional development and quality for the visual arts teachers. Last summer, only one workshop in the professional development catal catalog of Southwestern City School District was relevant to visual arts and or technology. And this um, study is a s shown here is a statewide comprehensive survey by SRI International revealed that during the 2005-06 school year only 11% of schools surveyed offered sequential standards-based courses of study in all four arts disciplines and that only 29% of schools offered a sequential standards-based course of study for even one of the arts disciplines. So now let's move on to the 21st century classrooms. According to the article Designing the 21st Century K-12 through Classroom, the modern day's classroom's design should revolve around the idea that students should no longer be sitting alone at desks, spitting out answers to a teacher who stands behind a podium. In the last century, we were a factory-driven society and schools were designed around the concept, said Raskin. Today, we must create a space where students can collaborate and participate in real-life environments where they can learn how to work on teams. That's what they'll be doing in the work world. This is um, fascinating to me, this section, because in Southwestern City Schools, we are building 13 new elementary schools and, in, and renovating two other schools um, all with new technology. So I was able to look at what we're doing in Southwestern City Schools. Southwestern City Schools are designing two large extended learning areas. They're calling these ELAs for the entire school plus eight smaller ELAs. The large ELAs are designed to give the teachers an opportunity to collaborate two or more classes together in one open area. Rather than having a designated room for a computer lab, designers have opted to create these mobile carts. This allows for flexibility in teaching, but these carts will also allow for ample technology availability for the upcoming park assessments. The large ELA will be equipped with a main presentation station, wall-mounted video data projector, video presentation tool, sound field enhancement systems with two wall-mounted speakers, 26 computer lab computing devices, but these will be a netbook style of computing devices on two carts. Each pod will have, or ELA, will have sufficient netbook devices for all students in one classroom to execute the same project or online testing. Seven hardwired data ports. The small ELAs will contain one 24-inch HDMI monitor with keyboard and mouse and a mobile desk. And this diagram shows what they will have in the ELA. It's just a portion of it. I didn't add the whole picture here. The classrooms will be equipped with technology, of course. The key technology piece of the classroom will be a mobile teaching area. 
The current design and plan for this mobile teaching area will contain a mobile adjustable height table, presentation station located underneath the surface of the table and connected to the building wide Wi-Fi network, which we don't have any Wi-Fi, so that'll be exciting. HDMI LCD 24 inch display connected to the presentation station and located on the work surface. Wireless keyboard, wireless connection to the video presentation tool. The presentation station will also have applications which enable connection to and display of student or teacher computing devices on the presentation screen. And I'm starting to run short on time so let me just go through these real quick. A document camera. Um, 3 AV input selection panel, audio and volume control, classroom control panel, um, composite video with stereo audio input, uh, wall mount unit, vis video presentation tools. Then the projection surface will be a whiteboard marker with a surface finish appropriate for use as a projection surface. Each classroom will contain a sound field enhancement service. Each classroom and instruction area will have a telephone, which will be very excited, and those will be the VoIP voice over IP phones, because right now only about one in 10 classes have telephones. So we're excited just to have telephones. And then there's a bunch of various other things found in the classrooms. Um, and you can see that here. The push within the Southwest City School District is a move towards a Google environment. They hope to move from traditional Microsoft Word to Google Docs for student use. The teacher laptop will still have Microsoft Office Suite, but the move to Google Docs is exciting, but a little bit um, a little apprehensive. This move will require stable and reliable network access for all technology pieces. And right now we haven't seen that in our school district, so I'm hoping to see that. They're still trying to decide if they're going to have Chromebooks or other electronic tablet devices, but they've already decided that an iPad is not an option due to the high cost. And if we move on, I will close by saying, again, most 21st century technology will not begin to grow and enrich learning until teachers begin to embrace it. Professional development and support from administrators will encourage their desire to integrate technology into their lesson plans. And thank you for listening.